Hello, Fight Fans. My name is Nick Peralta, and this is episode four of Puncher's Chance. It's been a hell of a week, so let's talk about some of the bigger news that's gone down this week before getting over to some fan questions. Jose Aldo continues to insist that his mixed martial art days are over. Okay, look, I'm going to keep talking about this one until people legitimately understand what's going on here. I mean, you have one of the best, the best uh, pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world. I mean, he was formerly ranked number one pound for pound there was a time when that happened and he's looking to walk away right now and he's only what 29 maybe 30 I know I know he's no older than 30 years old some of the questions that I were getting for this episode were if he gets cut from the UFC where does he go after that it's not about that it's not about that at all he's you know I mean Jose isn't looking to be cut from the UFC so he can compete somewhere else he's legitimately saying that he does not wish to compete in mixed martial arts period anymore basically saying that he's retired he cited the the multiple account, uh, accounts of disrespect from the UFC which you know I've gone over before I think just in the last episode um, and the direction the UFC has taken with uh, with you know their main events aka their apparent favoritism towards Conor McGregor uh, and as well as his desire simply to now pursue other athletic uh, avenues uh, Specifically, I believe in soccer. Now he's been somewhat vague about that. Like, if he wants to be a manager or a player, if he wanted to play, that would explain a lot why he he really wants to be completely split from the UFC. Because I believe as long as he's contractually set with the UFC, he couldn't play. Not without them, uh, you know, being able to uh, find him or to set some kind of course of disciplinary action towards him. I mean, this is still crazy. This is insane. You know, uh, that, you know, you have Jose Aldo, Mark Hunt, now could possibly Khabib Nurmagomedov, all saying that they're willing to leave the UFC if things don't change. That is, that's big, man. I mean, the, these new business practices that the UFC seems to favor now um, are deterring some amazing fighters. I mean, Mark Hunt, still top 10 heavyweight. Khabib, number one uh, lightweight, debatably, arguably. And Jose Aldo, former number one pound for pound fighter. You know, th th this is quite the story to follow. I really believe that, and and we and, and I mean not just with Jose Aldo. I mean it's bigger than him. I mean it's still big because now you have Jose Aldo, and the, the names are just growing and growing and growing. So uh, I will continue to follow this one. And it's going to be very interesting to see in the near future just how this all plays out. Daniel Cormier versus Anthony Rumble Johnson two set for UFC 206 in Toronto. Whoa, it's going down. I like this one. This is a huge match. This is a huge rematch, rather. And uh, Rumble's back is is far against the wall here. I mean, uh, this fight uh, happened at UFC 187, I want to say. Um, and Daniel Cormier wound up submitting Rumble Johnson in the third round via rear naked choke in that fight. That fight has some amazing moments. Uh, you know, D Cormier showed off some solid kickboxing. And John <laughs> Rumble Johnson absolutely launched Cormier off of his feet with a single punch. Um, while simultaneously that did prove Cormier c can take one hell of a shot. Cormier would go on to use his wrestling tires to do Johnson out, uh, but since that fight, Johnson has been on a tear. I mean, he knocked out Jimmy Manoa, second round, Ryan Bader, first round, and then he topped that all off by knocking out Glover Teixeira, which who's done that, in just over 13 seconds. Johnson has cited that uh, he's made the, the necessary improvements to take on Cormier, most notably his wrestling defense, which of course proved to be his undoing in that first fight. Um, you know, and Cormier has been poking the bear a little bit, stating multiple times since, uh, since the fight was even rumored that he plans on standing, trading with, and knocking out Rumble. Sure, Cormier had some moments in that first round striking, but of course I would truly st suggest that he not do that with Rumble. Um, I think we can all agree uh, Cormier may or may not be trying to get either some laughs or maybe even get inside the head of Rumble. Um, either way, who knows, this rematch is going to be very interesting. Um, it should be amazing, especially if Johnson really has made the proper changes that will help him to avoid um, the same result happening that happened in the first fight. Um, I love this fight though. You guys let me know. Who do you think is going to win this amazing rematch? Uh, goes down UFC 206 in Toronto. Uh, I'm psyched. Can't wait to see what happens. Cain Velasquez versus Fabricio Verdum set for UFC 207. I, I knew it was going to happen. I'm very glad I was right.
This is going to be fun and interesting. You know, uh, we're Doom hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. If his last fight at UFC 203 is any indication where he was able to dominate uh, Travis Brown. Um, however, Kane looked like the Kane of old that we're used to seeing when he fought Travis Brown as well and absolutely decimated him in the first round at UFC 200. And now here's the thing. He will not be fighting uh, uh, thousands of miles in, in the air. Uh, I've said it before. I, I truly believe that Verdum, right behind Holly Holm, had the best performance uh, of, t of, of 2015, you know, beating Kane the way that he did. I mean, it's Kane Velasquez. I mean, he showed to have the most expert preparation for that fight. You know, um, he game planned masterfully for that fight with Jafar Cordero and turned in as close to a masterpiece as you're going to get when you fight Kane Velasquez. Uh, I can't wait to see this fight. You know, let me know what you guys think, uh, how this fight's going to go. Um, I'm truly excited for it. I think that, uh, you know, this will really show us where Kane's at in his career for a guy that's been injured as often as he has. He's injured his shoulder, his leg, his back, um, specifically his knee when it comes to his leg. Um, and those are major injuries. You know, those are injuries that put guys away or, you know, really uh, help to cut the timeline or the lifespan of one said career. So we'll see how this fight goes I'm really excited about it um, since it's on pay-per-view and I don't think it's the main event it's only gonna be three rounds which makes it an even more interesting type of fight BJ Penn withdraws from UFC fight night in the Philippines prompting the UFC to cancel the event so now here's a very interesting rumor I've heard about this it would seem that the Philippine Commission or government or what have you was looking to not only drug test the fighters but the UFC staff as well and along with that, and by the way, they were going to use blood tests, not urine tests. Um, along with that, may have looked to criminally charge said staff or fighters uh, if any of them did pop for any drug tests. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys are in the know about this, but the Philippines' stance on drugs these days is pretty hardcore. Their leader and president, Duterte, I may have said that wrong, honestly, um, has taken on this insane crusade uh, against drugs and drug trades in his country and uh, which includes marijuana for anybody wondering and oh man like it's crazy the penalty for being caught with drugs over there um, is much more severe than it is for getting caught uh, for drugs here in America which is definitely saying something so uh, as a friend of mine said Penn may take this fall but he may have saved the lives of a couple UFC employees at the same time now, Penn only suffered a, a minor injury, so the UFC is looking to remake that fight at a later date. Why Penn is still uh, up for fighting Ricardo Lamas or why that fight's even happening is, uh, is a question that I, I really can't answer. But let's get to the questions that I can't answer. Dean Stone asks, if Dan Henderson KOs Bisping and retires, who gets the title shot? Well, Dean, this one's actually pretty easy. Chris Weidman uh, fights Yo Romero at UFC 205, and then you have Jacare and Luke Rockhold fighting in the same month, headlining a fight night card um, in Australia. So, you know, if Hendo, and that's a big if, it'd be legendary if that happened, um, if Hendo is able to win the strap, retire, and then vacate the belt, we already low-key have a middleweight tournament going on, and then the winner of those two fights fight each other, new champion. Again, I have to reiterate, though, big if, you know, um, but we get to find out the future of the middleweight division this Saturday, don't we? Brandon Grigsby asks, did Dan Henderson really earn this title shot? Another great middleweight question. So, yes and no, you know, in a sense. Uh, his career and legacy, I, I would say, played a huge part in, uh, in Henderson getting this title shot. The fact that he wants this to be his last hoorah. The fact that he proved that he can knock high-level dudes clean out. The fact that he's won a championship in every single major organization he's ever fought in, except the UFC, and not for lack of trying, I believe this is the fourth time he's been set up to fight for a UFC title. And the fact that he knocked out the current UFC middleweight champion with what is undeniably, undoubtedly, undisputedly, last one's probably not a word, um, what is for sure the, the greatest one punch knockout uh, in the history of the UFC. All of this, I believe, will accumulate into what I think will turn out to be a great card. You have Dan Henderson, 
You have Michael Bisping, a rematch for the ages. I mean, who would have seen Dan Henderson getting another title shot? And who would have saw Michael Bisping being the champion? Who would have saw either of these guys rematching for a UFC middleweight championship? This year's been crazy. And I mean, my God, my goodness. Could you imagine if Henderson were to do the impossible and win the title and then vacate it? and then go out as, as a UFC champion, George St. Pierre style? In my honest opinion, I believe that that would probably solidify him as the greatest American pound-for-pound -pound fighter uh, in MMA history, period. That's right, I said it. If you disagree, let me know why. All right, guys, that's it for this one. I want to say thanks to everybody that threw questions my way. I had a lot to get through, and I would have liked to have fit more, but this was a pretty stacked episode. Um, if you're not, if you haven't already, go follow me on YouTube, MMA Discussion, Puncher's Chance, go look it up. And then, uh, of course, on Facebook, MMA Discussion, follow MMAOutsiders.com. And uh, if you haven't already, tell your friends, give me a share. It's always much appreciated. Plus, give me some love. Give me some love in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. If you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, Throw them my way. And of course, don't miss UFC 204. Uh, Dan Henderson takes on Michael Bisping for the middleweight strap. It is going to be insane. Uh, and if you can't wait till Saturday, and I'm telling you, neither can I, World Series of Fighting, World Series of Fighting Friday night will be putting on one of their best cards of the entire year, on paper at least. You have Sean Jordan making his heavyweight debut, or promotional debut rather. Uh, Jason High, Brian Foster. You have... Vinny Magalhaes challenging for the light heavyweight strap against David Branch. And of course, lightweight phenom Justin Gaethje defends his title for a promotional record fifth time. That card's insane. I certainly recommend it. That fight will be on NBC Sports Network. Be sure to check that one out. And until next time, next week, I will see you in the next video. Later!